Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation. I know what you're thinking. You're saying to yourself, or maybe out loud, I already got the answer. This is easy. I can do it in 10 seconds. Okay. I'll take a little bit more than 10 seconds. And I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. The first method is called no pain, no gain. And sorry about that. Apologize in advance. So we're going to look into the cubic formula. And I know it's a uh, overkill here, but I just wanted to demonstrate every time I get a chance. The cubic formula works like follows. We have a plus b quantity cubed, which can be written as a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab multiplied by the quantity a plus b. And then I can go ahead and take this expression and subtract it from both sides. And I get the following a plus b cubed minus 3ab times a plus b equals a cubed plus b cubed. And then I go ahead and call this x and then I come up with a cubic equation. x cubed minus 3ab x equals a cubed plus b cubed. And I can, I can kind of sh show you, uh, you know, write these a little differently to indicate that yes, this is indeed a cubic equation. So we have something like this x cubed minus 3ab x equals the following. Now, so we kind of have a reduced cubic because we don't have any x squared, but that's fine because the cubic we're given is also a reduced cubic. And it's that one, x cubed plus x minus 10 equals 0. Let's go ahead and add 10 to both sides and write it in this format. And notice that these equations are very similar. And by comparing them, we get the values of a and b. So that's how the cubic formula works. You kind of turn it into a quadratic system and then solve that, find one solution, and then go from there. Great, so let's go ahead and compare these two equations. Comparison shows us negative 3ab equals 1, which is the coefficient of x in both equations, which indicates ab is equal to negative 1 third. If I go ahead and cube this, I get a cubed b cubed equals negative 1 over 27. So that's one of the equations that I need. And the other equation is going to come from here, a cubed plus b cubed equals 10. Now, how can I use these two equations? This is a system. It looks cubic, but it's actually quadratic. So let's go ahead and do the following. Replace b cubed with 10 minus a cubed. And then go ahead and substitute that into the first equation. That gives us a cubed times 10 minus a cubed equals negative 1 over 27. I know this doesn't look very good, but don't worry, we're going to simplify this. And if you distribute, you get 10a cubed minus a to the 6 equals negative 1 over 27. Let's just multiply both sides by 27 to get rid of the fraction. 270a cubed minus 27a to the 6 equals negative 1. Let's go ahead and put everything on the right-hand side. 27a to the 6 minus 270a to the 3rd minus 1 is equal to 0. Great. So we got rid of all the fractions. We put everything on the same side. The leading coefficient is positive. Everything looks good. Now, let's go ahead and use substitution to turn this into a quadratic equation. How do I use substitution? Let's call this C. Do you see what I see? So now we get 27C squared minus 270C minus 1 equals 0. And if you solve this quadratic equation, you get the following. C equals 45 plus minus. 26 times the square root of 3 divided by 9. And this should equal a cubed. But which one? Let's go with the positive. Doesn't matter because a and b are interchangeable. Suppose a cubed is equal to 45 plus 26 root 3 over 9. This indicates b cubed is equal to its conjugate. Like this. Or you can switch them around. Doesn't really matter. From here we can take cube roots and find the values of a, a and b. And remember, x is equal to a plus b in the cubic formula. So, x becomes the cube root of 45 plus 26 root 3 over 9 plus the cube root of 45 minus 26 root 3 over 9. Now, we got the value of x. How nice, right? But this is so radical. And guess what? From here, this gigantic expression turns into an integer and x becomes 2. Awesome. How do you find the other roots? I'm going to show you that in the second method. 
Here's my second method. For the second method, let me write the equation one more time. I have x cubed plus x minus 10 is equal to 0. So I can use the rational root theorem or just notice that this expression can be written as x cubed minus 8 plus x minus 2 equals 0. Why did I split up the negative 10 like that? Because when I do, this expression becomes factorable, factorable by grouping. Because x cubed minus 8 is a difference of 2 cubes, which can be written as x minus 2 multiplied by x squared plus 2x plus 4. And x minus 2 can be written as x minus 2 times 1. Let's go ahead and take out x minus 2, which tells us x equals 2 is one of the solutions. And the other factor is going to be x squared plus 2x plus 5. And the whole thing is equal to 0. Obviously, from here, x is equal to 2. And the other one is going to give us the following complex solutions. x is going to become negative 2, I mean negative 1, plus minus 2i. And i is the number whose square equals negative 1. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.